morning. Let's see. Can Yes. Okay, great. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Pastor Liz Bell, and it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, I will bring you greetings on behalf of the Synod a little bit later. I get to work with Bishop Jones, and I work with you as part of the, the Northeastern Iowa Synod. But uh, before we get into that, let's get ready for worship. Are there any announcements that you want to highlight or mention uh, for the good of the group here to, today? All right. Well, then let's take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship using the brief order of confession and forgiveness of sins found in the front of your bulletin. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn, hymn 413. 413.
we continue our worship this morning on page 213 in the front of your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one. We praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us from all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. 
I'm guessing as I did when you looked at the lesson this morning, you go, whoa. <laughs> so as a preschool Sunday school teacher, I decided to think outside the box, and we are going to use our Bible this morning. So Dylan and May, this one's for you guys. Okay. The first lesson is from Genesis 1, verse 1 through chapter 2 through 4a. So pretend you're a preschooler right now. Creation. Before God created the world, there was nothing at all except God. On the first day of creation, the wind of God blew. Whish, whoosh, swoosh, God said. Let there be light. Crackle, boom, bang, there was light. God saw that the light was good. Then split, God divided the light and the darkness into day and night. On the second day, God said, let there be sky, pillow, billow, puff, and there was a sky. God, God saw that the sky was good. This picture. <laughs> On the third day, God said, let there be water and dry land. Drip, drop, kerplunk, there was water. Crackle, crunch, snap, there was dry land. God saw that the water and land were good. Then God said, let there be plants and trees. Rumble, rustle, pop. There were plants and trees. God saw that the plants and trees were good. On the fourth day, God said, let there be a sun and a moon and stars. Let the glimmer, shimmer, shine. There was a sun and a moon and thousands of stars. God saw that the sun and the moon and stars were good. On the fifth day, God said, let there be sea animals that swim and birds that fly. Wiggle, splish, splash. There were sea animals. Flutter, putter, tweet. There were birds. God saw that the sea animals and birds were good. On the sixth day, God said, let there be animals every, of every kind on earth. Growl, prowl, snort. There were animals with fur. Skitter, scatter, creep. There were bugs. Slither, slink, hop. There were reptiles. God saw that the animals and bugs and reptiles were good. Then God said, let there be people on earth. Blink, wink, hiccup. There were people on the earth. God saw that the people were very good. On the seventh day, God said, it is time to rest. Phew. God and all of creation rested. I had to get prior authorization to do this, just so you know. <laughs> the psalm this morning is Psalm 8. We'll read it responsibly. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, O oh Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. He runs the readings. Our Holy Gospel this morning comes from the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven apostles went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Before we dive into the scriptures, I will take a moment to bring you greetings on behalf of the Northeastern Iowa Synod. We are 145 congregations, I think, so 145 congregations. We are two Bible camps. We have Lutheran Social Services and the Bremwood Campus. We have two Lutheran colleges, one maybe a little bit better than the other, uh, and we also have, um, what am I missing? Lutheran social services, camps, churches. We are doing so many things all together and all of this ministry of which you and I are part. And so I want to bring you greetings on behalf of the whole um, uh, this morning. I also want to bring you greetings particularly from Bishop Kevin Jones, your bishop. Please know that especially in this time of transition, but all the time. You are being held up in prayer. I know this because I know that we as a staff make sure to pray for you regularly um, as you do and you are a little bit of the gospel in this part of the world. So I want to bring you greetings on behalf of Bishop Jones and I want to give you a word of thanks for the ways that you figure out how to share the love of God in this space, in Laporte City and beyond And that distinctively Lutheran way of being Lutheran that says, well, you don't have to have it all together. If you want to pretend like you're perfect, we'll tolerate you, but you don't have to. Because what unites us is that we all need some love and grace and forgiveness because none of us have it all together. None of us have lives that are manageable all the time. We all rely on the grace and kindness of God. And so, thank you for the ways that you embody that grace, that you extend that grace to those all around you. Thank you. Now, this morning, we find ourselves in the middle of the beginning of creation. And I wish I could remember the crackle, bam, boom of creation, the sizzle, the lightning split. It was lovely to hear that version of of creation. And there's so many different ways that creation is shared. And in the Bible, we have poetry, trying to get at the truth of who God is, the truth of that moment of creation, the truth of God who is still creating, trying to get at that wonder, that power, that majesty, the creativity of God. I remember when I was a lot younger, I would get into conversations about religion and science. And I had a friend who was very deeply into science, just really enjoyed the intricacies of chemical compounds and balancing equations, and others who enjoyed just thinking about the physics of how things work and move and are. And I had a friend who said, you know, the more I learn, the more I discover part of experiments and read and wonder, the more, the more I stand in awe of God. The more, the more I wonder at the mystery of God who creates God, who makes things in ways that we can't even imagine. You know, standing out in a field or even sometimes our own backyards or our mountaintops, surrounded by the stars, we can't help 
but join that psalmist who says, my God, my God, how majestic is your name and all of the earth when I consider the works of your hands. Who are mere mortals that you would care for us? This morning, I invite you to to be in that space of wonder and awe. When you consider the heavens, when you consider the stars all around, have you been there when you're all alone and it's quiet? Well, not so quiet, isn't it? Because you can hear nature all around and you look and you see the stars. You consider the earth. Consider the sound of the bugs and you think about the bugs and how the bugs might have their own little bug family if you will and the intricacies of bug life like a ant farm so intricate so small compared to how big life can be for you and for me with our graduation parties and weddings and Funerals and life and school and work and everything in between. How very small we are when you think about the earth. One planet with all these nations and peoples and histories surging and foaming and being. But one little planet in our solar system with Seven to eight, depends on how you feel about Pluto. A solar system, which is part of a galaxy, which is a part of many galaxies. And you think, how amazing, how awesome, awe-inspiring, how huge, how vast. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name and all of the earth when I consider the heavens, the work of your hands. How can we not stand in awe? God who knows your name, the number of hairs on your head, and some of us have more than others, I understand. But the number of hairs on our head, God who knows you, knows the intricacies of human beings, human relationships, but also the intricacies of the, the makeup of what makes a grass, a blade of grass, and what makes wheat, wheat, and makes flower, flowers, and birds of the air, birds of the air. God who holds it all together and still creates, and still cares, still is a force at work in the world, we stand in awe. Small and tiny, the worries of our lives, the buzz and the hum of all of the things around, vying for our attention for a moment, and maybe just a moment, We stand in awe, so small, and yet part of something so big and vast and beyond comprehension, a glimpse of the glory and the goodness and the majesty of God. There's something grounding, isn't there, about being in nature and being in the presence of the stars or the grass and the trees and the life around us, to be in nature. I have a friend who says that she takes off her shoes to be in the garden. And after living in Oklahoma where there are fire ants, it is a pleasure to be in Iowa where you can take your shoes off and be safe. Standing grounded in the earth around, connected to something larger and bigger. We're at the doctor the other day, and the doctor says, you need to get out in the sun because there's something about being outside that's good for us. Reminds you and me that we are part of something bigger 
and greater. It connects us to that vibrant life that is God, the source of our life, that in whom we have our life, our being, our essence. I wonder if Jesus, knowing this about being in creation, being a little bit further from the fray, from all of the ins and outs of everyday life, if that's why Jesus, when he was going to say his final goodbye to the disciples, decided to meet them on the mountain, knowing that as they climbed that mountain, they might be able to get some perspective. Like my friend taking off her shoes as they walked up that mountain, as they were able to let some of the worries and the concerns, the fear, the grief. Jesus had just died on the cross and then a a week later rose from the dead. That's a lot to think about. And then locked in that room for fear of what was next. In that chaos, in that upset, that upside down, not knowing and fearing and worrying and doubting and being pushed and pulled. I wonder if Jesus knew the way the family and friends were looking at those disciples expectantly, pityingly, that as they walked up that mountain, when they finally had to stop to catch their breath, that as they caught their breath, they could look over the valleys and the villages, if they could look and see and start to hear not all of the concerns and worries, but to start listening and hearing the other sounds, the sounds of nature, the sounds of the wind through the hills. And as they walked, able to more clear their mind and be open open to Jesus right there in their midst, Jesus who had died and rose again. I wonder if for a moment they could feel a little bit more fully that peace of God that passes all understanding. Not a peace that means that there's no conflict, but a peace you can take with you, within you, that peace that is rooted and grounded in Christ, rooted and grounded in the love of God revealed in Jesus, rooted and grounded and nurtured by that Holy Spirit who grounds us, who moves us and shapes us. If in that they could connect to that peace that was there, the peace that would hold them up and give them courage and strength for whatever would come before them. Maybe they were open, or maybe they took their worries with them, full of all the concerns and the buzz. For some came and they still doubted. They had that with them, with their worries and their concerns and the everyday, and even with the everyday stuff, pulling and pushing, there Jesus met them. There Jesus meets you, where you are, wherever you are, however you are, and Jesus is the one who brings you peace, not conflict-free, not without worries or concerns, not with all of the stuff of life, but Jesus who brings you peace, rooted and grounded in the love of God, peace that you can take with you, peace that will see you through the storm, peace that will shine when there is so much goodness and celebration, peace, deep and resounding peace and meaning. In the chaos of this world, God brings forth life and peace and beauty. Jesus gives you and me this peace, the peace that passes all understanding.
And on that mountain, so many years ago, meeting those disciples, he says, go, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. And know this, I'll be with you to the end of the age. Jesus knows the value of this peace that passes all understanding. And he invites you today, like he did those disciples, to share that peace with those around us. Invite others into the way of peace, of love, of goodness, of justice, of of beauty, into that love of God. Make disciples. Share that peace. Live in that peace. Share that peace with others that they might share that peace with more and more and more so that there might be peace that resounds throughout our world. Go and make disciples. Share that peace of Christ that passes all understanding because it is good. Because God is good. And, frankly, Jesus tells us to. Amen.
Please join me in proclaiming the faith we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations, encourage bishops and pastors and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel, and direct all baptized into lives of humble service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between and within nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, all who are grieving, and those who are sick. We pray especially this morning for Mark and Kate, Bonnie and Michelle, Norm, Monty and Alan. Lord, our God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer. Those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities, and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when our work is done. We give you thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of the resurrection life in the age to come. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share signs of peace with one another. You may be seated as we continue with our offering.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, broke it and gave thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it and gave thanks, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in the remembrance of me. And together, as God's children, we pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Everyone is welcome at God's table. This is the body of Christ, broken in love for you.
Please stand. You have been fed and nourished with the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it strengthen you and keep you in God's peace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment that we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into the world through the one who is our deepest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls us across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless you, keep you, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Please join me in our final hymn, hymn 665. 665. Now, before we go in peace, I have a tradition where I ask that we can take a picture uh, and send our greetings on Facebook to the other congregations and beyond in the Synod. Now, if you do not feel comfortable with your face on Facebook, it's very simple. Just put your hands up. You'll be fine. But I think today, if you don't mind, I think there's enough of us that if 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 it's not too much of a bother, let's try to have a picture with a cross in the background. So if you wouldn't mind coming on up, um, and then we'll take a picture. And again, I'll put it on Facebook. Just put your hands like that. It's fine.
does not have a picture. He's always hungry. Is that the way the, the barn was? I get that. I met with them for my barn design. Yeah. 